been at MEC since I was technically 14, been around, and then moved over for uni, so I guess full time from when I was about 17, 18. 30 or 31 years? I'm a little lost track a little bit there. At the end of 2007, uh, which is about 14 years I think. We've been a part of North Cape Baptist Church for 50 years, 50 years and... Seven months. Seven months, how about that? Since I was a baby, thanks mum and dad. <laughs> since I was born. I've been here since the first Sunday of 2020. Uh, here's to another 60 years, let's go. Since I was born, so 19 years. Since I was about tw 25. Oh, that's a good question. Um, start of 2022, so a year and a half, 18 months. I've been at NBC for five years. I've been a part of NBC for 25 years. Uh, 13 years, roughly. Since I was six years old. Um, since I was born. Uh, almost 30 years. Oh, I don't know, like 12 years? Yeah, around a year. I've been here for like 12 years, maybe. Wow. So, most of my childhood. A year and a half, I think. About 22 years. <laughs> I've been here at NBC since the beginning of last year, but um, have connections from back in the day in the 1990s. Uh, since I was seven, it must be 33 years now. Oh my goodness me, I think it was 1987 in the February, February 1987. For 20 minutes. For 20 minutes, oh. Good morning church, lovely to see so many people here. Um, I'm Ali Ottenhoff. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been thinking about this week's pastoral prayer and praying for the right words for today, our very special Welcome Home Northcote Baptist celebration of 60 years of God's faithfulness, 60 years of fellowship in this place, and one word came through very clearly, and that was family. So with this in mind, let us pray. God, our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your amazing grace that saved us, that changed our lives and brought us into your eternal kingdom. We thank you that you have given us a new family tree, a new identity, a new story, a new opportunity to live out our lives that you created for us. We come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, not as strangers, but as your children, your sons and daughters. Thank you that you chose us as your dearly loved children. Give us the courage to be the people you have called us to be. As 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. All of this has come to us because we know the God who chose us. He chose us because of his own glory and goodness. Please help us keep our eyes on you and put you first. Help us to do your will by making the right choices so that we can fulfill the plans and purposes you have for us. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you that our church is not merely a building, but a people who belong together, who love and care for one another. Help us to fulfill our church vision, to love wholeheartedly, connect intentionally, and serve with all we have. Aroha, Banangatanga, and Manakitanga. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love. Thank you that you look beyond our faults. Forgive us when we fail to love each other in the same way. As we celebrate the 60th anniversary of Northcote Baptist Church, our church, we thank you for our rich heritage, for our founding members' obedience and vision, for all those in the past who have led our church and responded to the call on their lives to serve you in this place, we are truly thankful. Now, 60 years later, almost to the day, we celebrate the blessings we have had over the years, the new ministries that have begun, the challenges that God has brought us through, the changes that have taken place as we have adapted to meeting the needs in our community. Thank you for leading us as a church. We pray for our pastors, Marcus and Nicola, Give them discernment and wisdom, and may they be led by your Holy Spirit as they continue to do your work at Northcote Baptist Church. We ask that your Holy Spirit will guide them and that you would be their refuge and peace. 
We also pray for Ricky, who leads our community ministries, for Judy Ann, who leads our children and family ministries, and for Susan and Nikki in the office. Please continue to surround them with your love and help them in the work they do in our church and community. Thank you for our elders and ministry leaders. Encourage them in all they contribute to NBC and help them in their decision-making and in the areas they lead our church in. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and that you meet us right where we are. We reach out to you and ask that you would meet the needs of those in our church and community who need healing, who are unwell physically, emotionally, and have health needs, or are grieving the loss of a loved one. We think especially of the Gilchrist and Lewis families and the George family. Please watch over them, give them strength, and help them to feel your presence through your Holy Spirit. Comfort them and help them to find refuge in you in this difficult time. We also lift those who have financial burden, bur burdens and other concerns. Thank you for the work that CAP does to help those struggling in this area. Please be with Dean and Penny as they meet and interact with new clients. Help them to build relationships of trust and be sensitive to the needs of those they are working with. We also ask for provision of support for them from our church family with volunteers going, coming alongside to help and love and care and bless those who need this support. We pray for the Alpha course starting on Thursday this week. Thank you for Mike and Kim who are hosting and leading Alpha and for all those supporting them in prayer and those providing meals. We pray that through Alpha your love can be shared that those attending will learn more about you and that they will be eager to continue to put their trust and hope in you and grow in their knowledge of who you are. We pray for our church family who are serving you here and abroad. May they sense your presence as they love and serve you, watch over them and please protect them and their families. Lord, we give you the glory and honour for all you are doing in our lives. May we follow you every day with all we have. Shine your light in us, through us, and over us. Help us to make a difference in this world. May we stand firm in our faith and reflect your peace and hope. Amen. During hard times, um, we were looked after and prayed for. I think our church Vano here is um, key for me, really. Um, I love the people and the way that they support me um, and encourage me in my faith. And yeah, I feel like it's the people for me. I think I felt the Holy Spirit work here many, and especially in the very, very recent, the last 10, 15. And I've seen God do things in this church and grow it and help people. And it's basically like, yeah, I want to be part of that. I have uh, really made friends here and I really would have to say that I love the place. I love the, um, the pastoral team um, and it's just a lovely feel about the place and I feel that people are um, friendly and connecting. Well, we've found the love and the acceptance and plenty of opportunity for service and uh, it's, it's our spiritual home. Oh gosh, lots of reasons. I think the community here is great. Um, lots of families here. Uh, lots of interactions with God through different things. The community and the family of the it's a second extended family. It's the place I go to church, I guess. Because <laughs> um, I love the community. Um, the people here are awesome. And yeah, it's just a good environment. Got married here, brought up my family here. This is where um, I, my home is on the shore here. Yeah because my husband goes here <laughs> and because one of the things I really noticed about Northcote Baptist when I first arrived was that um, there's a real uh, humility of spirit amongst the congregation and everyone was just faithfully serving the Lord and wanted to be here and wanted to be around each other um, and wanted to worship God together and that's very attractive. Uh, it's a praying church and many people have prayed over me. My family's here and I got lots of childhood friends I've grown up with and a lot of wise people who surround me and feed into my spiritual growth. Um, because I feel close to God when I'm at NBC. Because of the community atmosphere. Yeah, I love it here. I've been here my whole life so I feel like I have a good um, family and friends here and I love the way this church does its outreach. I guess this is where I came to know God and uh, this is where my friends and family go. Well, there's lots of people I know here and I'm um, technically like family to me. 
just because of the community and like friendships and stuff that I've built with like all ages, it's just a real sweet place. Yeah, it's a place that I can come with other believers and just, I don't know, worship Jesus. My parents go here and this is where I pray. God called our family to serve here. Came to faith here, uh, baptised here, married here, brought up my children here, um, have served and been here for that whole time and so there's nowhere else I'd rather be. This is where God led us as a family when we moved to the North Shore and I am still here. Show the community, the wider community, that we would love to have them come here. I think that we have lots of cool kids here that we can all grow together as a village and that we could be reaching our community in more effective ways so that we can be sharing the light of God, I reckon. Not just the praying, but really helping people who are in need. Just doing your little bit, but if we all, you know, that helps. That people um, really see us as being um, effective ambassadors for uh, the love of God in the community and that we grow. I like it just to keep growing and I just love the fact that the community is so being recognised by the church. Yeah, my, my hope would be that we would have a spiritual revival that breaks out in our church and spreads all over this country. They just keep um, reaching out to people. My hope's that it will grow and will be the biggest church in New Zealand. Heck yeah! <laughs> to spread Christ's love within the community and to continue to develop and grow as a community together. That we would come to know the love of God on a much deeper, um, all-encompassing level. Lots of children and continue strong in the faith. Uh, I'd love to see NBC grow in numbers, um, be a really cool outreach for the community um, and a place that people can come to know God. Oh, more youth people to come. Okay, this is a bit of a strange one, but just looking at the coffee cart over there, I really hope we get caramel coffee because I really like it. <laughs> we can uh, get more involved in our community and be a great outreach to our people. We would be a community that loves one another, loves our community um, and loves God just more and more every day. Continue to grow in the way it is. Well, I hope that everyone will have a good time. We would just be really surrendered to God and compelled to serve him in whatever way he calls us. Atamare Tefano, good morning family, and it's lovely to see all of you here this morning. 
Before I get into the message for today, I wanted to take this opportunity to offer a huge thank you to the anniversary planning team and to all those who work behind the scenes to make this occasion possible. Your contribution has been truly invaluable. And so on behalf of the church, I want to say a big thank you and say thank you for all the time and effort and energy that you have put into this event. It is truly appreciated. I also hope that this weekend has been a great opportunity for each of you to reconnect with familiar faces, sharing stories and memories together. We chose to uh, call this anniversary uh, Welcome Home because so often we p hear people say this place feels like home. And that says a lot about this church and of how God has influenced it. We know that NBC has a great heritage, don't we? for which we are truly thankful to God for. And that heritage is especially seen through the lives of those that God has led to be part of this fellowship, this church. Now, if you have had an opportunity to look through our History Cafe, which has been specially put together for this occasion, you will have seen and heard stories of God's faithfulness throughout the years. And this church's foundation has and always will be Christ. And by his grace, he has empowered and equipped godly men and women to serve in his name faithfully over the years, which being led by the Spirit of God has produced wonderful fruit for his kingdom and for which this we are truly thankful. The celebration of an anniversary is an opportunity to simultaneously look back, but to also look forward. Looking back at the past 60 years of this church gives us courage and hope for the next 60. As a church, we are formed and identified by our history, by where we have been in our past. But at the same time, the meaning of that history is determined by the future, by where our history is leading us. This anniversary is a time to remember, to remember the work of God through his people, including the individuals and families who have been part of the life of this church, those who have been born and raised and dedicated, who gave their lives to Christ, who were baptized and married, and those who have gone home to glory, those who have served, served and been sent far afield, those who have led or quietly been about the Lord's work. We remember the traditions that have been created, the events, the atmosphere of fun and joy, a community who has been built with Jesus at the center. These things help to make you the people that you are, and they are truly good. Now this morning, I would like for us to reflect on a particular passage of scripture that I think is helpful at times like this. So if you have your Bibles with you and you can go on your phones to do this, go to Matthew chapter 16. Starting at verse 13, the words will also appear on screen as well. Matthew chapter 16. And it goes like this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Now, this particular occasion within scripture is truly significant because it is recognized as the very first occasion that Jesus confessed who he really was and is to his disciples. But it was also special um, that he chose to reveal this reality in a region that was predominantly Gentile, thereby heralding that his mission would eventually extend to all peoples. And in amongst what he shared... He made a statement in which he used a word which would come to be known as one which would describe the gatherings of his disciples. Today we say church, but the word that Jesus used was ecclesia, which when translated means an assembly, 
or a group of people gathered together for a common purpose. Now, Jesus said this well before what we normally consider as the igniting of the Christian church on the day of Pentecost. But scholars believe that in Jesus using this word, Ecclesia, he was doing a couple of things. One, he was announcing or prophesying what would come from these disciples and those who would believe in their message. That Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, that he is the son of the living God. And that too, this statement of Jesus was a clear claim of ownership. He said, I will build my church. In other words, the church universal, the worldwide Christian church belongs to Jesus. It is his community. And so what this means is that Jesus brings people together in common, that he will build his church. And he builds it on a firm foundation. On this rock, he will build. And he builds something that belongs to him. It is his church. And he builds it into a stronghold, whereby the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And the worldwide Christian church, through good times as well as bad, has not only weathered it all, it has also been by God's grace taking ground for him for 2,000 years. And NBC has been part of that story, and it continues to be so. Now, when Jesus said to Peter, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. What Jesus was saying is that he promised to build his community of followers on this rock, on Peter's affirmation, his confession of Jesus' identity. In other words, Jesus builds his church on those who affirm and accept the rock-solid truth of who he is. For he is the foundation which is supernaturally strong and stable and immovable and dependable and so reliable that he and he alone supports the church. You know, throughout the years, I have always been so grateful to God for how he used Northcote Baptist Church to reach me for Christ and to help grow my faith. In, the form, in my formative years, because in doing so, it helped to shape who I have become and what I do and where I have been. No matter what setting I found myself in, there have been key qualities, key attributes that were modeled and instilled in me through this community of faith, qualities that I embedded into my life, which are consistent with what Christ would have for his church, foundational qualities. And I'm sure that this is a truism for many people who are or have been part of NBC. For example, the word, the scriptures have undergirded how NBC has always existed and operated. It is the wonderful basis of our understanding of God and his will. You see, what we believe is so vital to who we are as a church because it determines how we live, how we approach life and faith. Putting our beliefs into practice is central to our convictions as disciples of Christ. And those beliefs stem from the word of God. This church, from its inception, has always been able to answer the question that Jesus asked of Peter. Who do you say I am? You, Jesus, are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This confession is monumentally significant because it affirms Jesus' divinity and his unique, unique role as Messiah, as the anointed one, as the savior of the world. That is what we hold to. That is what we confess. That is what we teach. And that is what we communicate, announce to the world through our lives. God has communicated this truth through his word and through his spirit to us, and we have accepted it. Jesus is the very rock, the very foundation upon which his church is built, of which we are a part. But as we know, if that foundation is not what is laid, then what will have been built would eventually sink beneath the sands. But if what is built is built upon the rock and it remains on the rock, in other words, that we, we don't tamper with the foundation, then it will last as Christ, as our cornerstone. And so, as we look back to our history, 
We acknowledge that Jesus is the foundation of our faith and of this church. And over the years, faithful men and women of this fellowship have had the privilege and great responsibility of building on that foundation, which is, again, another key attribute that has been instilled in me. What has been clearly seen through this church is that of people fulfilling the calling that God has placed on them to love and serve in ways that enrich the body of believers, that reach out to a wider world, that nurture and grow disciples, and above all, most importantly, that give all glory to God. As a community of faith, we have existed, we still exist, and we will continue to exist to honor and celebrate our risen Savior, and we do so through our lives and through the mission which God has called us to take part in, his kingdom mission. Jesus is the rock in which his church, the worldwide church, is built on, but he is also the builder as well. That he and he alone is the one who lays the groundwork for the building of the church. And as he does, he is faithfully gathering living stones together, his people. And he is assembling them into a spiritual house, an ecclesia of those who have come to faith in him. Who in turn will be his witnesses, his hands, his feet, his voice in a world that has turned its back on God. That is what God is doing throughout the world. But that is what he is also doing through NBC. That is our testimony. That is our reality. And so in coming back to our text, Jesus said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. In ancient times, cities were generally surrounded by great walls and gates. And in battles, the gates of those cities were usually the first place enemies assaulted. This was because the protection of a city was determined by the strength or power of its gates. Now, the name Hades was originally the name of a Greek god who presided over the realm of the dead, which was also known as the House of Hades. It is designated the place to which everyone in this world departs. Uh, once Everyone goes where, once they depart this life regardless of their moral character. And so in the New Testament of the Bible, Hades, also referred to as hell, is represented as a mighty city with its gates representing its power. Now, in sharing this particular imagery, what Jesus was doing was referring to his impending death. Though he would be crucified and buried, he was rise from the dead and he would build his church. Jesus was emphasizing the fact that the powers of death could not hold him down. And not only would his church be established in spite of the powers of hell, his church would thrive. It would never fail. Though generation after generation succumb to the power of physical death, yet other generations will rise up and perpetuate the church. And it will continue until it has fulfilled its mission on earth as Jesus has commanded. All authority in heaven and on earth, has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It is clear that Jesus was declaring that death has no power to hold God's people captive. Its gates are not strong enough to overpower and keep imprisoned the church of God. The Lord has conquered death, and because death is no longer master over him, it is no longer master over those who belong to Christ. Scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 2 that Satan has the power of death, and he will use that power to try and destroy the Christian church. But we have this promise from Jesus that his church will prevail. And so as part of the body of Christ, NBC stands firm in its faith, We hold fast because Jesus has vanquished death and the devil. Amen? Amen. For those that belong to Christ, the victory is ours through him who has conquered the grave. Therefore, as a community of faith, let us continue to go forward with confidence because of all that Jesus has done for us. Where death attempts to reign, 
We are to proclaim the resurrection. When the forces of sin try to take over, we are to proclaim repentance and forgiveness. Where evil is at work in the world, we are to proclaim the kingdom of God. Now, as we know, there is a lot that we can learn from the past. But its most important function is to lead us into the future. We see in scripture that Jesus made this thought quite plainly. He told his disciples on different occasions to remember what he had done. But he also turned their attention to the future task that his, that his ministry was preparing them for. Go and be my witnesses, he told them. Go and work in the vineyard. Go and make disciples. It would seem that Jesus never let his disciples dwell on what had already been done. Their purpose was not to be found in where they had been, but in where they were going. Our faith is born and nurtured in a historical experience and what, G and what God has done for us in the past, but it always leads us into the future. And so as a church today, our anniversary celebration naturally turns our gaze back on our history, but we must let that history be part of our movement into the future. Jesus has commissioned us and he has sent us into the world with a mission. Therefore, how do we fulfill that? Well, I remind you of the vision statement of this church, that we are to love God, that we are to connect together, and that we are to serve others. Aroha, Fanonatanga, Manakitanga. Our mission is to follow Jesus with all we have, that we are to be in boots and all, that we, are to, that we would be all that God desires for us, that we would be a Christ-centered, word-craving, spirit-driven, gospel-proclaiming, obedience-living, servant-hearted, mission-focused, worship-exalted, abundant-loving people. And in doing so, it means that we have responsibilities, a responsibility to the younger generations, to prepare them for what they will face in life. We have a responsibility to those in the older generations to help meet their needs in a changing world. We also have a responsibility to the community around us to proclaim the good news of salvation and to be examples of Christ's love. We are to let the stories of faith and service and commitment that are told today as we recite the history of this congregation, strengthen us and prepare us and propel us into the next era of life and faith and ministry in this church. The world has changed since this church was founded. But what hasn't changed is the gospel. For the good news is as true and enduring today as it was 60 years ago. And so we move forward, prompted by the gospel, united in God's love, fulfilling the mission that Christ has set before us. And like the example that has been left to us by those who have gone before, may who we are and all that we do be completely and totally honoring and glorifying to him who has saved us, who has set us free, and set us on a path of righteousness. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we gather before you with hearts overflowing with gratitude and joy as we celebrate the 60th anniversary of this beloved church. And as we look back on the journey that has brought us to this moment, we are reminded of your amazing grace and of the countless blessings that have marked our path. Lord, we thank you for the faithful pioneers who founded this church six decades ago and for their unwavering dedication, their sacrificial efforts and their boundless faith in you. Through trials and triumphs, they remain steadfast, shaping the vibrant and welcoming community that defines our church family. We are humbled by the legacy of worship and fellowship and service that, have that has thrived within this community of faith. The echoes of prayers offered, songs sung, and sermons preached resonate deep within us. 
We thank you for the lives transformed, for the friendships formed, and the love that has been shared. And as we look back in gratitude, we also look ahead with hope and anticipation. Lord, guide us as we journey into the future. Bless us with unity and wisdom and an unwavering commitment to your purpose. May the flame of our faith burn brighter with each passing year, illuminating the lives of those around us. We pray for the next generation, for the children and young adults adults who will carry the torch of faith forward. May they find this church to be a haven of spiritual growth, a place of genuine connection and a source of unwavering support. We entrust them into your care, asking for your guidance to shape them into bold and compassionate leaders. Heavenly Father, as we stand at this crossroads of past and future, we humbly seek your guidance. May we continue to be a beacon of light, spreading your love and grace far and wide. May we embrace new challenges with the same courage and conviction that fueled those who came before us. And as we celebrate 60 years of your faithfulness, Lord, we are filled with hope for the countless years to come. Please bless this church and all those who will join this family in the future. May your presence always be felt within this community of faith. And may our actions always bear witness to the power of your love. And in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. And as a church family, we say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all.